How about your story? Well, my story right now is I actually uh, produce a reality show called Riding with Willie. Oh, jeez. And you're in it right now. <laughs> I've been interviewing you for my YouTube channel. Uh, is it okay if I share your story? No, you can We are picking up Jim on this Uber ride share. Let's see where Jim's hanging out here. They can see Jim there waiting for me. All right, take care, Jim. Like Fantastic. Good by yourself. Yes, I am. I have to ask because I saw your license plate in the front. Big Titans fan, or at least a Titans fan? Well, you know, I am from Atlanta okay. originally. Um, and I'll always be a Falcon fan, I'll always be a Braves fan, but the Titans are my AFC team. I adopted them when I lived here the first time in the 90s yep. for three years. I went back to Atlanta, but they've always been my AFC team. So. Just wondering yeah. how you thought about the whole Vrabel. Do us that? The whole Vrabel thing. If that's a good You know, he's a good coach. Uh, your perspective. Because I'm well, i a Patriots fan, and I was like, damn, I wish we got him instead. <laughs> I wanted him. Uh, uh, Vrabel, yeah, I think he's a great coach. Yeah, I think he's a good coach. I think he I think he may be a little too loyal Yeah. to us. But, you know, you got to respect that. I'm loyal, too, to my friends and colleagues. Yeah, see, I agree. I think he's a good coach. But you think he's just too loyal and – cause them to make some decisions that otherwise others it happens yeah it happens yeah i think it does i think it's just human nature and loyalty is a good thing so I, you know I, I'll, I he's gonna land somewhere yeah he will yep he will uh, maybe not this year i mean, I, don't, I don't see him taking anything less than a lateral move yeah um no, and I don't blame him he's not going to go back to being a defensive coordinator he's a head coach and he'll he'll get that job next year yeah. Or by the end, of, some team will fail and, and maybe bring him in. Yeah. Well, in Atlanta, I'm in Atlanta as well. My my son went to Georgia Tech, and uh, I I had I've been to Atlanta one time prior to for a conference, and I was nice. But when I went, we went to in Georgia Tech, right, and went to that campus, and he was looking at Columbia and MIT and several others, and. Uh, he walked to campus and he, we got through that Friday. We hadn't, he hadn't even done one thing. And he said, I think this is where I want to go. And I said, you know, Jake, I think this is where you belong. <laughs> and uh, it's just a great city. I don't know what you thought. I don't know why you laugh, but I'm just, it's a great city. No, it's I'm, amazing I'm, how I'm much is not laughing at, at, at that because, uh, you know, I've got, I'm a George Bulldog. So, um, but I love, I've got friends that went to Tech and that area is beautiful. Uh, Atlanta, like any major city, has its share of oh yeah violence. Yeah, he had a lot of he had several shootings outside his apartment, which was he was right in Midtown, right across the bridge from uh, Georgia Tech in a new new housing complex, a huge skyscraper area. But he lived across from a club, and there were several that took place while he was there. So certainly he said yeah it can be uh he had a gun pulled on him once and yeah he's like yeah how old some... is he now is he graduated yeah he's 20 yeah he graduated in three years um he's 24. 24. good for him what does he do now engineer he works uh he works actually i used to work at curing dr pepper and so he had interned i got him an intern while i was there and um he they hired him out of school right before he even finished his in fact his last semester he was commuting to knoxville because we have a big plant there and he was commuting um and go back for the weekend basically or for two days i don't remember what days but he'd go back to school and then he'd go back out and work so when they were done they hired him full time well so, good for him yeah you yeah, be yeah. proud what about you mr jim what do you do well I worked for Keurig for years. I was a finance VP. What we saw all the supply chain for, we had 30 plants across three countries, and we had purchasing in, in, uh, in. It's a great uh, brand. 
Yeah, it's a good brand. It is a good brand. Yeah. And I mean, we, we, I, we started at the Green Mountain side and then we ended up being bought by a bench, by, by a PE firm. And then they decided in 2018 to buy Keurig, uh, Dr. Pepper. It was their way out. They wanted to go public back public that eventually they were going to take Keurig that way, but it was a lot easier to buy somebody that's public and then they could slowly spin themselves out of it. Um, but after a number of years, I was there for 15, I decided it was time to leave. Um, I was, you know, making great money, but having, I was, I, I lived in Vermont and I would fly to Texas on Sunday night and fly back on Friday night. So, you know, when you realize you, you're home for a day and then COVID hit and I was sitting home for a year and said, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. But you need to slow down before you realize it. You know what I mean? Jim, you look pretty athletic and I can't imagine a guy with your build not playing golf. <laughs> so I'm trying to reconcile Vermont with a golf game because you get what, three months out of the year, yeah, maybe? Yeah. That's so a, how do you keep your, you, I, I know it's your travel with sticks, but I'm going to guess you play golf. I do. I do. Yeah. But, but, yeah. And in Vermont, how often do you get to play? Um, not very often, but that was one yeah. of the beauties of when I was in Texas, cause I traveled there a lot. So we, you know, you were able to play a lot more because most of the, most of the time I was down there and I'd stay for weekends at certain periods, but there you can get stretched. Um, there's certain courses that are not as good, but they will open up in the springtime. And Tell me about play. Vermont now. Uh, what what area? So I'm up by the Burlington uh, okay. neck of the woods. So to be honest, about 45 minutes from the Canadian border. So you don't get a whole lot further north. Yeah. Um, but I grew up there and then I lived and moved down to Boston. And I was there for 20 some odd years. And I had two young kids decided it was time to go back home so that they could be around their family. My, my actually, my ex-wife at that time said, I think we ought to move there. And she was from Boston. And when I met her said, I'm never moving to Vermont. But later she realized I was in my happy place when I was up there. So she encouraged us to move. And I, I certainly respect her for that one because uh, I think the kids had a good upbringing and um, it's just a different quality of life. You know what I mean? It's just nature. A lot of outdoor stuff that you just can't help but do and um, not some of the problems that the bigger cities have still have them but not to the same degree this guy speaking of problems <laughs> it's just he's this poor guy is not well he is not well at all oh sad it is really sad you know i was saying that there were three guys sleeping on the vet and i was with a bunch of people that, uh, this weekend and I'm like, it's all but a grace of God that you didn't end up that way. You're like, it's just a bad, bad fortune. Most of these people have, you know, had something happen that triggered a problem and you could be that same person. You said it correctly. If not for the grace of God, there you are. Yep, exactly. Yep. So what do you do now? Was so it, I ended up, I thought I was going to retire. I was 52, took a few months off, ended up trying to help a small company. I was a CFO of a small company that they were looking to do some stuff. Um, when I left, I said I was going to get out of finance because I spent my entire career there and I just decided I wanted to change. Um, after doing it for a few months, I said, the best advice I can give you guys, is you, that was the highest paid employee. And I said, you can't afford this. I think what we want to do is go. Okay. That's integrity. Basics. You're the CFO. <laughs> you come to, you, you go before the board and tell them, look, I'm the highest paid guy here. You got to fire me. Yes. You got to let me go. Do. I just said, I'm not taking a pay cut. So I just, and, and I was willing to work to some degree, but I felt like they didn't need me. They were not at that size that they needed it. I think he was, he had big aspirations, but then he had real financial problems. So like you can't, you just can't work yourself out of it that way. You have to do it smart. So they had a pretty solid uh, person that was in the finance function that was making about 40%, 30% of what I was. And I'm like, that could do the job. This. What's that? That could do the job. Yeah, I felt she could do it. That shows and a lot of integrity in me. That's well, a, I, I yeah. spent a year just coaching her up. I just did it out up to the side. I really didn't take a paycheck because I didn't need the money. And I said, I'll help. I'll, I'll help them, help you. And I felt like it was a better opportunity for her to step into something. I think she just needed the inner confidence that she could do it. So, so philanthropy is part of your uh, well, corporate <laughs> resume, huh? You know, I've been lucky in my life and people have taken care of me and hooked me up along the way. And I feel like at this point, it's not just about the money. But then I ended up buying a, a business and it's nothing fancy. It's a, a fairly mediocre size pick pack ship operation. It's like a warehousing, you know, we, we break, we get pallets of product and we break them down and send them to customers, you know, and tractor trailer loads of, of FedEx. I have a trailer that's parked there all the time and they just come and grab it at the end of the day and we just ship out um 
and that has been working out really well for me. Good so for again, you. life balance. So it's like uh, you're semi-retired. You sort of got a car in the garage. You pull up the hood and play with it a little bit. I get to, right? I get to go in, and I shouldn't say when I walk, because there are days and stuff that I don't want, then I still go in, but I don't have to work every day. I'm able to take like this. I go, I'll go Well, you got to pull the days. weeds, right? Yeah. If you're going to grow the tomatoes, yeah. you gotta, yeah, the garden, yeah. you got to pull the weeds. Yeah. But it's fun. And here again, if I've got some employees that, you know, they they don't make a lot of money. And I feel I'm not trying to oversell myself, but I, I don't make uh, tons so that I can give them stuff. I'm like, I want this balance. And again, I've got a good, uh, I've been lucky in life. And I feel like I want something to do. I need a place to go. And I want to be able to stimulate my brain some. And if I can actually give yeah, you something gotta stay to somebody, active. yeah, and do something, but have my own free time that I can travel like this or go. I have a son in Miami. I have one now in Boston, but he was in Virginia. He, the one that was in Georgia went to Tennessee. Then they moved him to Virginia. Now they moved him to Boston. So I'd be able to go visit them as well. So, yeah, I had, a, I had a real good pal of mine who retired. He owned a battery business in Atlanta. Uh -oh. Small operation, but he, he we worked for him. Then bought it, took it, took it over, ran it, uh, sold it, inherited some money from his his parents, who were wonderful people. Unfortunately, they passed away, and uh, so he moved to Florida, bought a home. But rather, and he retired, but he started fishing Flagger Pier down in Florida, and they made him the pier manager, you know, because he just knew everybody, everybody loved him, yep. so he had something to do. Yep. And he did that. They've shut the pier down because he you know, got hit by two different hurricanes. So they shut that down, so now he works. There's a, a radio, small little radio station there, and he he plays Beatle records and That's Beach Boys and stuff, awesome. and he doesn't, you know, he stays active, but he doesn't need, you have he, to do he doesn't need the money. He just enjoys, yeah. Yeah, you have to enjoys do people. Have to, because I think it, it's hard. I mean, I tr I thought I could do it. I had a couple of months, and it's fun. But when you don't know what day it is, and people say that, but you truly are like, is it Thursday or Saturday? And, and you really can't get your head around it. That I think that is the kiss of death. I really do, because you you just start your brain just starts to mush a little bit. So I realized I had to have some structure. So the way that I I'm really trying to work it is three days three days off, four days off, so that at least you're always knowing what day, you know, have a commitment, have some place to go, have something to do. Um, so anyway, I enjoy it. Get I out and shake show. hands, meet people. Yeah. Keep connections. Exactly. Yeah. That's a great, uh, that's a great story. How about your story? Well, my story right now is I actually uh, produce a reality show called Riding with Willie. Oh, jeez. And you're in it right now. <laughs> I've been interviewing you for my YouTube channel. Uh, is it okay if I share your story? Sure you can. Yeah, this is great, Jim. I appreciate you sharing that. What's the name of your company? Uh, it's called Lemieux Logistics. My name, my last name is Lemieux, so it's Lemieux Logistics. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for sharing your story. You had no idea you were going to be. Now you know how the light's right. on. Yeah. That'd... Just to add a little more, you know, keep the exposure <laughs> correct here. That is a riot. <laughs> yeah, it's called Rod with Willie. I'll give you the card. I here. would love it. That's yeah. outstanding. You know, Jim, I've had a blessed life, except for that one Super Bowl Sunday when the Atlanta Falcons. That was the best one. That was a good one. I don't played know what you're about. twenty-eight to three. I don't know. And in honor of that, I'm about to put you out on the side of the road here. Maybe you can get that. Uh, I shouldn't have said the picture. But, it's but my favorite, my favorite story that I tell people that are Patriots fans is that you know, right after you guys came back and kicked our tails. 28 to 3. We don't forget it either. Um, Inspire Food in Nashville bought Dunkin' Donuts. Uh -huh. And an Atlanta based corporation owns, we make your donuts now. But don't think that's not, that wasn't the plan. <laughs> we make your donuts. You get special donuts at the Boston. You get, you get, you get, you get, yeah. Be careful with those donuts in Boston. We make the donuts. We own you. I'll have to remember that. You owned us in that Super Bowl, but we own you now. 